In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the data analysis tool pack to return some descriptive statistics about your data in Microsoft Excel. This includes the mean, standard error, median mode, and so much more. I'll not only demonstrate how to create the descriptive statistics, but I'll also interpret each one. As always, if you find this content useful, please let me know by leaving a like on this video. Now let's dive into Excel and get started. In my Excel sheet, I have a sample of data in my first column that I want some descriptive statistics for. A useful feature in Excel that many people do not know about is the Data Analysis Tool Pack. The Data Analysis Tool Pack is an add-on created by Microsoft to make it easier to perform different data analysis procedures. To ensure that the tool pack is activated correctly, go to File, Options, then select Add-ins. At the bottom, where it says Manage, ensure that you select the Excel add-ins and then click Go. Then make sure that you have the Analysis Tool Pack option ticked and then click the OK button. Now when you select the Data tab at the top of your screen, you should see a Data Analysis button that appears. Now we're ready to perform the descriptive statistics. To do this, I will select the Data Analysis button. Then from the list, I will select Descriptive Statistics. For the input range, this is where you want to enter the range of cells containing your data. So I will click on the up arrow button to the right, and then I'll highlight my data and then press the Enter key. You next need to tell Excel how your data are entered into your sheet. If you have the values stacked in a column, as I have done in this example, then these will be grouped by columns. If these are entered into rows instead, then I will select the rows option here. If you also have labels at the top of your data in the first row, then select this option here. I haven't got any labels in my example, so I'll leave this option unchecked. For the output options, this is where you specify where you want the descriptive statistics to be returned. For the first option, you can enter a specific cell in the same worksheet where you want the results to be entered. The second option will enter the results in a new worksheet. And the third option will enter the descriptive statistics in an entirely new Excel file. I'm going to have my results entered into the same worksheet as my data, and I'll place them around here. Underneath, you can tick the various descriptive statistic options that you want to perform. I'll tick all options and explain each one in more detail shortly. So that's the setup done. I'll now press the OK button to perform the descriptive statistics. As you can see, I now have my results entered next to my data. And I'll now go through each one in more detail. The first result is the mean or average value. This is where you would add up all the values in your sample and divide by the count. In other words, the number of values in the sample. You can calculate this separately by using the average function. Underneath we have the standard error. The standard error is a measure of the variability of the sample means in a sampling distribution of means. The higher the standard error, the higher the variability. You can calculate this yourself by taking the standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of the count. Moving on, we have the median. Say we have sorted our data in ascending order from smallest to largest. The median will be the number that lies in the middle of these values. In this case, the answer is 50.3. You can calculate the median separately by using the median function. After this, we have the mode. The mode represents the value that appears the most in the sample. The mode for my example is 49.8, since this value appears twice. If you want to calculate the mode yourself, you can use the mode.sngl function. After the mode, there is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation in the data relative to the mean, where the higher the standard deviation, the higher the variability. If you'd like to calculate the standard deviation of a sample separately, then you can use the stdev.s function. Related to the standard deviation, we also have the variance. The variance is simply the square of the standard deviation. And if you'd like to learn more about the variance, then I suggest that you check out this tutorial. The Excel function for the variance of a sample is var.s. Under the variance value, we have the kurtosis. 
Ketosis is a measure that defines how heavily the tails of a distribution differ from the tails of a normal distribution. In Excel, a normal distribution has a ketosis value of zero. Positive values indicate a relatively peaked distribution, whereas negative values indicate a relatively flat distribution. So I can see that my data has heavier tails than the normal distribution. Next up, we have skewness. Skewness is a measure of asymmetry of the data distribution. A value of zero indicates a perfectly symmetrical distribution. If the value is between negative one and one, but isn't zero, then the data are considered fairly skewed. And if the value is outside this range, then the data are highly skewed. In Excel, you can use the skew function to calculate the skewness value separately. Moving on, we have the range. The range is simply the difference between the smallest and largest values in the data. Underneath, I can see that the minimum value is 39.4 and the maximum value is 63.3. So the difference of these two is 23.9 and this is the range. If you want to calculate the minimum and maximum values separately, then you can use the min and max functions respectively. Next up, we have the sum. The sum is simply the total when you add up all of the values in your data. And you can use the sum function to calculate this yourself. The count is the number of values in your data. In my case, I have 25 individual values. Now during the data analysis setup, if you selected the kth largest option, then you'll also have this result here. In the setup, I specified one in the box. This means I'm asking Excel to work out the first largest value in my data, which is 63.3. If I inputted two instead, then the second largest value will be returned, and so on and so forth. Similarly, if you selected the kth smallest option, you'll also have this result here. Since I inputted one in this example, this means I'm asking Excel to work out the first smallest value in my data, which is 39.4. Again, if I imported two, for example, then the second smallest value will be returned instead. Finally, the last entry in the descriptive statistics table we have is the confidence interval value. This is the value that you can add and subtract from the mean value to calculate the upper and lower 95% confidence intervals respectively. I go into a little bit more detail about this in this video here. And this brings me to the end of this tutorial. You now know how to calculate and interpret some descriptive statistics in Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.